We're going to be looking at verse 13. Praise God. This is a very familiar verse of scripture that a lot of us know. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to the text. Here we have the Apostle Paul who has written a letter to the church at Philippi. And he says to them, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to read that to you one more time. I want you to get it. I want you to let these things sink down in your ears. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. He says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened in me. Praise God. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for the word of truth. Help us, oh God, to understand the things that are written therein. Give us revelation knowledge that we might be able to know what is your will. Even in these last and evil days, we give you praise. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Again, we're coming out of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Again, the apostle communicates this divine truth to the saints that was in Philippi. And he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Praise God. Now, one thing I found out that I can do nothing. Amen. I can do nothing, but I found out that I can do all things through Christ. us particular things that we can do notice that you cannot do it in your own strength. Amen. Amen. You and I are finite beings. We are limited to what we can do. But when the Spirit of God begins to anoint you to do a particular thing, then now you have the super Oh, my God. 
Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse 7 says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now understand verse 7 here. He said we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What is that treasure? That treasure is the Holy Ghost. That earthen vessel is these bodies that we live in. God has deposited in his people his spirit and enabled us amen, to do those things that he has commanded. And I'm going to tell you something. When we do these things by way of the Holy Ghost, then God gets the glory in Christ Jesus. The Bible said that the excellency of the power might not be of us, but of him. Come on. Hello, somebody. Why do you think a lot of people come to church and they're troubled? You know why? Because they feel like they can't do this, they can't do that. It's because the preacher is telling people to do things that they can't do. People must remember that you can never do anything that God has commanded until you first get saved. Come on. You got to get saved. You got to get filled with the Holy Ghost.
He says in verse 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. That word power in the Greek is dunamis, which means in the English,
God to do it for you, he got to take you through. He got to take you through, praise God. He got to take you through. This man ain't coming easy. He got to take you through. Oh, come on. This is a pressing way. This is a pressing way. Come on. He said, I'll give you power over serpents and scorpions. Yes. And over all oh, the power of the enemy. Amen. Amen. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Now, how many know if you're going to walk in that, you got to have a prayer life? Because right. we don't pray today that much. Come on. We got the cell phones to distract us. We got social media to distract us. Everybody think they are businessmen because they got an account on Facebook. Come on. Because they got an account on Instagram. Now they feel like they somebody. Come on. Now they can engage in conversations with people. Because you know, I got Facebook. Hit me on Instagram. Come on, somebody. you as he gives you the wisdom yeah. 
lightly esteem. Huh? Amen. We're not supposed to lightly esteem. No. We're supposed to follow hard. Y'all believe that? We're supposed to follow hard. How many believe that? Amen. I'm just trying to help somebody. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Is this helping somebody? Is this helping somebody? Amen. Let's read this. I'm going to read Mark chapter 10. Let me read Mark chapter 10 and verse 27. It says, And Jesus looking upon them said, With men it is impossible. Did you see that? I'm going to say that again. Jesus said, With men it is impossible. But not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. How many know we got to have some faith? Hallelujah. Because see, when Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. But he that cometh to God and believeth that he is, he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him.
why he has to speak the contrary. To get you to believe the contrary of what God said. And even though he knows what God said is true. But if he can get you to doubt, he can keep you from being blessed. He can keep you from fulfilling God's command in your life. Come on. And you cannot afford to allow the enemy to overtake you. Hmm? That's why when you go to war with the enemy in the spirit, there's a weapon that God gave all of us. Does anybody know what that main weapon? There are other weapons, but there's a main weapon. Anybody know what that main weapon is? What's that main weapon? He said, and take unto you what? The sword of the spirit, right? Which is the what? It's the word of God. The Bible says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Like you do. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Jesus encouraged old Peter. In Luke 22, he says, Satan has desired to have you. That's right. But I pray for you. That's what he said. Yeah. Satan has desired to have you. That he might sit you as wheat. So the devil work on you incrementally. Little by little. Without you even paying attention. Alright. Hmm? Amen. It's like somebody getting close to you and every time you turn and look. You remember that, that little game we all used to play? Red light, green light. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And when they're not looking, you itching your way up there. And they turn around and you stop like ain't nothing going on. And the moment they turn back, you're itching your way up. That's how the devil do. He itching his way up there. Come on, incrementally. Gradually. He don't do everything in one way. Anybody sifted flour? It's a process. Come on. He desires to sift you as wheat. But Jesus said, I pray for you that your faith fail not. Because when our faith fails, we become limited. We become limited. And we're not able to get God to move. For us without faith it's impossible to please God but he that cometh to God must believe that he is how many know this is a faith walk Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 said that we walk by faith and not by sight this is a faith walk everything God says he wants you to believe him yes. and when you believe him how many know you walk by faith yes. Yes. too many people walk around talking about I believe I believe but I don't see you moving <laughs> come on See, faith don't stand. It walks. Come on, when you believe in God, come on, then you're always in motion. Doing what the said the Lord. Come on, you don't want to just sit there and say, I believe God. And everything God said, you ain't moved. When God told me, he said, go bend it up. For the saving of your house. believe. 
See, the devil wars against your mind. Yes, he does. Because he's trying to keep you in unbelief. Mm -hmm. He don't want you to believe. Because he knows if you believe, all things are possible. Hallelujah. All things are possible. Some people have not received the Holy Ghost and spoken in tongues because they haven't believed. Hmm? Amen. Somebody, somebody said, well, yeah. But they haven't believed. So how many know that if you believe the message of Jesus Christ, but he said repent, or you're going to perish, what are you going to do? You're going to repent. Or you're going to perish. You're going to repent and then you're going to get on that altar until the fire of God hits you. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And if you don't do it, it's because you don't believe. Yeah. And the devil, this is why I, I tell people all the time to declutter your life. Yeah. Because those things will serve as a stumbling block for you to keep tripping over. Then you wonder why you can't get the God. You wonder why when you get on your knees and pray, you fall asleep after four seconds. You didn't, you didn't cluttered your life up with obstacles that will block you and keep you from getting the God. But we don't look at it like that because as long as it stimulates the flesh, now it becomes a stronghold and now it's difficult for you to get rid of it. Even when you want to get rid of it, you find yourself can't That's why the Bible tells you to remove the stumbling block of iniquity. Yes, yes. You don't need nothing hindering you. The devil is already enough of a hindrance. Yes. This wicked world system is already enough of a hindrance. They see people looking in Jesus' name. You've been asleep for 15, 20 minutes. Huh? Come on. You don't need no hindrances. Come on. You don't need nothing that's going to create doubt within your heart and choke all the little faith you do got in you. Because how many know we need faith? Because without faith, you ain't walking in love. The Bible says faith work it. Come on. Amen. You gotta have faith. You gotta have faith. That's why you gotta declutter your life. Even when you're watching all that abominable stuff on television, don't you know there's spirits in that? And they will attack you. And when they attack you, you know what they're doing? They're fighting your faith. Then when you come to the house of God, you can hardly praise them. You can hardly believe God because those spirits have gotten your mind and they have taught you to rebel. Now, instead of you craving God, you got an appetite for that abomination. Come on. Amen. This is warfare. Look at your name and talk. This is warfare. This ain't no joke, man. This is warfare. The devil is fighting the faith of the saints. Didn't the apostle say in 1 Timothy 6, he said, I fought a good fight. He said, fight the good fight of faith. This is the, come on. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. And I kept faith. Many are losing the faith. We live in an apostate generation now. People have departed from the faith. They still go to church. They still say they believe the Bible. But you look at the things they believe. Yeah. They don't even believe it. Preachers that used to preach against hellfire, now they say it's a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. 
Huh? It's a fairy tale. So you said God is a liar. Because Jesus said to the one who buried his one talent, be ye cast in the everlasting darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So you said Jesus is a liar? We live in an apostate generation. And much of the church has become apostate because they don't even believe much of what the Bible says anymore. They quote it, but don't believe it. Amen. Huh? Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. People are departing from the faith. Hmm? Yeah. Christ got Christian churches now merging with Islam, and now.